fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high old silver, the Lone Ranger. Western part of the United States has known cowboys, trappers, and miners, railroad builders, empire builders, and soldiers. But of the whole adventurous group in the glorious history of that wild territory, one figure stands out above all the rest, the figure of the masked rider of justice. The story of his life is the story of daring in dangerous places. His exploits have been told and retold through the generations. And now the Lone Ranger rides again. Come on! We heard the Lone Ranger call out that the old feud between the raisers of cattle and the raisers of sheep was causing trouble. Maggie Martin was the leader of the group that fed sheep on the range. She was a woman of strong character. She ruled the sheep herders with an iron hand. She kept the ranchers from grasping the entire rangeland for themselves. And it was due to her influence alone that open warfare had not broken out between the two factions. In our opening scene, we find Maggie receiving a guest in her home. He is Pete Prindle, one of the most important cattlemen in the district. I just dropped in to see how he was doing these days, Maggie. You're a doggone fibber, Pete Prindle, and you know it. In the first place, you don't give a hang how I'm doing. you got some other reason for coming here, and whatever it is, my answer's no. No, hold on, Maggie. Another thing. As far as you're concerned, the name ain't Maggie. The name's Miss Martin. Savvy that? Uh, you got the wrong idea, you doggone... That'll old... do. Good day to you, Brindle. There's the door, and shut it tight behind you. You old fire eater. You don't give a man a chance to talk to you. Where do you get off telling a cattleman where to head in? I'll tell you whatever I want to. You being a cattleman, now don't no ways make you on the level. Now clear out before I decide to unlimber one of my six guns. All right. That's the way you feel about it. You can go ahead and lose your doggone sheep. I uh, reckon if I did, I'd lose him in spite of anything you'd say or do. You'd be tickled pink. All right, then. All right, if that's the way you feel about it. I'll have my sheep and sold all my friends in the sheep herding business. And we'll still be selling wool when the last of you ornery cowmen has seen your critters made into hamburger. Now get! All right, then. You wait. Wait nothing. If you hanker to start something, just let me know, and I'll meet you more than halfway. Might be interesting to you to know I'm getting all the sheep herders around here organized, just like your cattlemen. All right. You'll see. And shut that door behind you. And tell that bow-legged, sawed-off galoot that's waiting for you that he ain't fetched back the frying pan he borrowed from me a month ago. Reckon it's me she means, Pete. Yeah. What did you borrow a frying pan from her for? Oh, Pete, Maggie's all right. You just don't savvy her. There's a woman I could marry if she'd have me. <laughs> Blamed old wildcat. 
Only reason I wanted to borrow a frying pan from Maggie was to get a chance to talk to her. You're a blame fool, Em Frisbee. Maybe I am a blame fool, but I sure can find a woman that knows how to cook. And Maggie's it. She don't know you're alive. I know. It's downright discouraging. What more? You send back her frying pan. I don't want you to have no more to do with her, Savvy. Oh, now, Pete. I'm counting on you to help me drive her and all the other sheep herders out of this region. See, she gets back her frying pan and don't have nothing more to do with her. All right, boss, if them's orders. Them's orders. <coughs> Concerned sheep herders. That's so none of the cows will drink from the water holes around here. And by the time them sheep's done grazing, they ain't a square meal for a cow. Get up, Al. Come on. Get up. Get up. Uh, Pete? Well? You said something about driving off the sheep herders. Yeah, I got a scheme in mind. Take organization in cash. What's your scheme? Ain't no use telling it yet. I got to get all the cowmen together and have a meeting. Then I'll tell them what my scheme is and how we'll work it takes cash, there ain't much chance putting it over. Money's pretty scarce. Well, maybe money's scarce, or so is rangeland. Won't be no rangeland for cattle of them sheep around here much longer. I suppose so, but I, uh, I... Well, you what? Get up there. Come on, get along. You what, Lem? Oh, I hate to see Maggie pulling out. Well, blessed love sick to loot. She sure can cook. Talking to Chinaman, I got over at my ranch. And Maggie can do a good day's work. She'd sure make a man a good wife. Never mind thinking about a wife. Think about what we'll do with cows if the sheep ain't drove out. I tell you, Lim, we've got to get the cattlemen organized and work a scheme on Maggie Martin and the rest of the sheep herders. I'll bet you Maggie'd have some thought for me if it wasn't for the foreman of her ranch. Dad, rat it. Jim Potter shining up to her every chance he gets. I to think the woman I hanker to marry has to be raising sheep. It was evening of the same day when Jim Potter, the foreman of Maggie's Sheep Ranch, entered the house. He drew up his chair before a table filled with good food. Mm, darn nice of you to invite me into the house for meals, Maggie. Shucks. There's satisfaction in cooking up a meal for a good eater. Help yourself to the vittles and get some gravy on them, then fall to. I'll talk while you eat. You mm. seen Pete Prindle even here this afternoon, didn't you? Mm, yeah, I seen him. What do you want? He didn't get to say. I run him out before he could get to talking. I can't be spiling the disposition of the sheep by letting ornery cowmen around here. Maggie, them cattlemen are scheming something. We gotta wash them close. Ain't nothing they can do. We're here and we're gonna stay here. If the cowmen don't like it, let them hunt new grazing. They resent us being here something awful. What about it? We got our sheepmen organized. They'll all stick together. Yeah, but... But what? Well, the cattlemen are scheming something new. They are? Sure. Fact is, I heard from one of the boys they're holding a meeting tonight. Where? At Pete Prindle's house. What are they gonna do there? Well, that's what I'm worried about. They'll be plotting again us, Maggie. Doggone it, they're going to be plotting again us for sure. Uh, they can plot again us all they want, but they can't drive us out in here. We got land right from the government, and we're going to stick. Now, don't you worry about it, Jim. Fill up your plate again and get yourself around some more of that fancy cooking. Well, that ain't hard to do. Jim, did you hear that? Hmm. That hombre was right outside the window, heard everything we said. That same evening, Pete Prindle and 20 other cattlemen in the district held their meeting in Prindle's home. Again, the Lone Ranger, seated astride silver outside an open window, could hear all that was being said. All right, James, quiet down now, will you? Quiet down, James. Mr. Prindle has something important to say to you, boys. Hush up, you hombres. Let's hear what Prindle has to say. Uh, go ahead, Pete. Now, gents, here's the situation. If we aim to survive in this part of the country, we got to get rid of all the sheep. Grass Creek ain't fit for cattle as it is. Cows and sheep can't live together. That's all there is to it. It's a case to get rid of the sheep or move away ourselves. Watch your scheme, Pete. We don't want to shove off for new diggings. We ain't going to shove off. 
Now, my scheme will take a heap of money, but it's a sure one. What is it? Let's hear it. We'll buy up all the sheep. Buy them? How can we buy them? What can we do with them? What do we use for cash? That don't sound like good sense. I wouldn't own a sheep any sooner than I'd own a nest of rattlesnakes. Now, wait. Let me finish my scheme. I got it all mapped out. Them sheep herders figure on selling wool, don't they? Sure, but they... All right, boys. We buy up all that wool. Buy the wool. Oh, what do we do with the wool? Pete, I don't savvy that sort of scheme. We can't get the wool without taking the sheep. We won't be no better off than we are now. No, hold on. I got a friend in the East, and he can find out just what the price of wool is going to be. Whatever it is, we'll see to it that the sheepmen get word it's a whole lot less than that. You savvy? Then we deal with them. Lem Fresby can get to talk to Maggie Martin and pass the word on to her. What word? What am I going to pass on to her? Now, look. Say, for example, wool's going to be ten cents a pound this year. Yeah, ten cents a pound. Then what? I'll find out that from my friend in the East before Maggie Martin does. When she hears what the price of wool's to be, she don't get the word straight. She'll hear it's maybe six cents a pound. Then what? Then, Lamb, is when you call on her. We'll make a deal with her and all the other sheep herders to buy wool. All they got of it. It may be eight cents a pound. All we'll have to pay is about a half a cent a pound cash down, then we'll sell it again and make a profit. Two cents a pound cash profit for all the wool in this part of the country? Ginger, that'll count up. You can't make money no easier. And then when Maggie Martin sees what we done, she won't never speak to me again. You keep her trap shut, Lim. Listen to what we're going to do. Never mind your romancing with Maggie Martin. I ain't through with my scheme yet. There better be more to it, Pete. It still don't drive the sheep out of here. No, No, of course it don't. But when the sheep herders find that we're buying their wool at eight cents a pound, when they can sell it at a market price of ten, what do you suppose they'll do? I don't know. What will they do? They'll be doggone glad if we let them out of the deal so they can get the higher price, won't they? Sure. All right, then. We'll let them sell the wool for the market price if they agree to pull stakes and hunt for new fields for grazing. By Ginger Pete, that sure is slick. For the extra two cents they make, they'll move to new fields and be doggone glad to do it. And, and maybe Maggie Martin won't even know there was a scheme afoot. Maybe I can still shine up to her. Ma'am, you can make her think it's your influence with the cattlemen that helped her and her friends out in the bad bargain they made. Slickest scheme I ever heard of. We ain't out of cent, you see. We get back what we pay for the options. We get rid of the sheep herders. We keep the country for ourselves. Now, if any of you gents ain't for the scheme, say so now. If you are, just let me know how much cash you can raise. We've got to get ready to buy them options. We've tried everything else to get rid of them sheep, but nothing's ever drop them off. Cash will do it. Your scheme can't fail. Well, if I do say so myself, it's the best darn scheme I ever had. <laughs> When the Lone Ranger had learned the plans of the cattlemen, he raced to his small camp. There he met Tonto, who had gathered information about the sheep herders. The faithful Indian repeated what he had discovered. It's as I thought, Tonto. Those people are deserving of our help. Them plenty brave. Have plenty trouble raised sheep. And the cattlemen have made all the trouble. Furthermore, this country isn't well suited to cattle. If the cattlemen move on now, it'll be the best thing for them in the end. Mm, that's right. South of here, everything is suited to the raising of cattle. The plan I have will be the best for everyone concerned. What you plan? We must learn a few things more about Pete Prindle, and then we'll be ready to act. The curtain falls on the first act of tonight's Lone Ranger drama. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Now to continue our story. 
The cattlemen, under the leadership of Pete Prindle, and the sheep herders, led by Maggie Martin, were struggling for the control of the range. Prindle suggested to his associates that, through a trick, they buy all the wool in the territory for a price under its market value. Then when Maggie learned the wool's real worth, they proposed to allow her to get the extra profit in exchange for a promise to move the sheep to another district. The Lone Ranger, however, knew that the range was better fitted for sheep than cattle and decided to aid the sheep herders. Our next scene takes place several weeks later. Maggie was in the kitchen of her home when Jim Potter entered with a visitor, Lem Frisbee. What's this I hear about you and your no-account cattle-raising friends getting organized, Lem? Do you know what the boys are aiming to do for you, sheep herders? Buy the wool you got this year. Buy it? <laughs> you gone loco? What did you critters want with wool? Well, we figured on trying to make a little money on wool, that's all. You see, Maggie, Pete Prindle figured you'd be learning the market price on wool inside the next week or so. Then maybe you'd just as soon deal with him as ship east. What's he think of paying? Oh, couldn't say. Reckon about the market price? Yeah, if he's willing to pay my price for it, he can have it. Ain't no reason why we shouldn't deal with cattlemen. Their money's as good as any other. I reckon what you decide about selling the wool will be all right with the rest of the sheep raisers, won't it, Maggie? I've always done all their thinking for them, like as not always will. That's why I'm head of the Sheep Growers Association. That's what we sort of figured. Now, as soon as you get the price of wool, we can deal with you. Save you all the trouble of shipping it. Take it right off in your hand. When I get the price, I'll let you know. Now you set yourself down there and start eating. I suppose you come here hankering for food. Well, you better do it justice or I'll take it as an insult to my cooking. After enjoying a meal with Maggie, Lem returned to Prindle's ranch and made his report. So you see, Pete... She was perfectly willing to deal with us. I thought she would be. As long as we pay her price. She'll think we'll be paying a plenty high price for it. I got word from my friend in the east. Come by Pony Express. Well, how may you get her information, Pete? Uh, here's the way it's arranged. Next week sometime, the Pony Express will bring me the price on wool. At the same time, it'll bring a price to Maggie. But the price she'll get won't be the real price. The real price will go out by stage. Same way it's always done. But the stage will be a couple of weeks longer in getting here. She'll be at least another two weeks getting her real information. Yeah, the right information. She'll get some information before that on the Pony Express, you savvy? Yeah, I, I reckon so. It's easy to savvy, Lem. Maggie will get a message telling her the price on wool is six cents a pound this year. My friend in the East said it'd be at least ten cents a pound with things as they are... It might go as high as 20 cents a pound. 20 cents a pound? Yeah. We can make ourselves a fortune before we're done. Might be better to keep the wool and take a profit instead of getting the sheep herders to move. You say, Maggie, you'll think the market price is six cents? Yeah. And I'll make her an offer. It'll be enough below the real market price so we can make a profit. She'll be blame glad to get out of the options she's given us. I've got enough cash from the boys to pay for the options. I've got the message I want sent to Maggie all fixed up. And it's already on its way to my friend in the east. He'll send it to her by the pony rider. The same time he sends me the real price. Doggone good thing there's such a thing as the Pony Express. Yeah, we couldn't put the deal across otherwise. We've got to have some way of getting the price before Maggie gets it by the stage. But everything's working out just slick. Tonto was hidden nearby during the conversation between Prindle and Lem. He repeated what he'd learned to the Lone Ranger, and the masked man waited near the Pony Express station for several days. Then at last, one of the pony riders brought his horse to a rearing halt and tossed out two letters. <laughs> two pieces of mail for this station. Well, that's downright unusual. Who's getting mail besides Pete Prindle? Maggie Martin. Letter for her and a letter for Pete. My horse ready? All ready. <laughs> I'm on my way. Get up there. Yeah, yeah letter for Maggie Martin, eh? I'll take that to you her. What the... I said I delivered to Maggie. A masked man. She here, you. you I'm can't... not going to rob the mails. Give me that letter. Where'd you come from? I've been waiting for that letter. I'll deliver it. But, Dad, read it. Look here, stranger. 
If you don't deliver it, it means you've stolen the mail. That'll be my worry. I'll steal. The Lone Ranger mounted on Silver, thundered away from the station. Halfway to Maggie's home, he met Tonto and gave the faithful Indian a letter he had already prepared to substitute for the one brought by Pony Express. Take this letter, Tonto, and deliver it as soon as possible. Uh, Tonto, do. I have another letter here. I'll take this one to Pete Prindle. That letter you write? Yes. Maggie won't notice the postmark on her letter, but Prindle will notice it on his. He'll see that there's been a substitution unless I handle it just right. What you do? I'll let him open his letter, and before he has a chance to read it, I'll try to act. Get that delivered to Maggie Tonto, and we'll meet later in camp. Hi, Get him up, Pete, fella! Reckon that's the letter you was expecting, ain't it, Pete? Yeah, when did it come, Lamb? Just now. One of the boys fetched it up to the ranch house. Well, let me see it. I'm anxious to find out just what the price on wool is going to be. Yeah, me too. I reckon Mankey got a letter in the same mail. <laughs> she won't ever suspect it ain't the true price on wool that she got. Well, uh, let me see. What does this say? Raise your hands. Leapin' catfish. What's this mean? I said raise your hands. I'm here to look for something. Well, look here, mister. You He's mad, Pete. He's likely an outlaw. You better do what he says. I'm looking for a letter with money in it. Perhaps this is it. You're wrong there, mister. Looks like you got the wrong tip there. There ain't no money in that. I'll see. You don't expect to get away with robbery in broad daylight like this, do you, mister? Yes, I do. This isn't what I want. I told you it was The price on wool. You're welcome to that. Stand right where you are now. I'm leaving. I must have the wrong ranch house. I reckon you have, mister. Gosh! He come in fast and went out faster. Oh, Let me see that letter before something else happens. When the Lone Ranger left Prindle's house, he took with him the letter originally addressed to the cattleman and left behind one prepared by himself. Prindle read what he believed to be his friend's quotation on the price of wool, then went with Lem to call on Maggie. Maggie, surrounded by a group of her friends, came right to the point of the meeting. Well, name your top price. Well, no, Maggie, I don't know so much about the price on wool. The heck you don't. You know as much about the price as I do. Name your figure. I'll take it or leave it. Well, I might go as high as ten cents a pound, speaking for all the cattlemen. Ten cents my eye. The price is 18 cents a pound. Take it or leave it. We, we can't go that high, Maggie. All right, then leave it. We'll sell in the east. Pete, you know what that mess is. Shut up. What's agreed here stands. There's no backing down. You savvy that? I uh, might go 14 cents. You heard my price, 18. Well, uh, how's to split the price? 18 is the price, Brenda. No splitting difference or nothing else. I'll go 16 cents a pound and then a penny higher. What do you say, gents? Do you want to take 16? Uh, it's a go, then. 16 cents stands. Drop the option and pay over your money. 16 it is. Here's a thousand dollars cash money to buy in the deal. Now, you agree to sell us every pound of wool that comes off in your critter. That's what we do. By darn, she's a good woman to deal with. She don't hedge or beat around the bush none. You won't back down on the deal, will you, Maggie? You heard what the deal was. I don't back down no more than you do. Well, here's the money, and all these gents is witnesses. <laughs> and now then, Maggie... Here's the bad news for you. What do you mean, bad news? You sold your wool at 16 cents a pound, and it's selling at 20 cents a pound on the market. 20 cents a pound? Why, you're plum loco. I got a letter today saying the market price was 15 cents a pound. Yeah, you got a letter, but it ain't the right letter. The real price is 20 cents a pound. And you got to stand by your deal. You got a lot of witnesses here. If you back down, you know what it'll mean. Hey, you ornery coyote. <laughs> that letter you got wasn't genuine at all. It told me the price was 15. Yeah, but the real price is 20. Now then, 
If you and your friends want to get out of the bargain and make the extra four cents a pound by selling in the East, we cattlemen will let you do it if you promise to move out in this part of the country. Just one moment. Leave the snakes, me. There's that masked man. Where did you come from? Just one moment. I have the letter here that came to you, Prindle. I took it when I called at your home and substituted the letter you have. I didn't give you a chance to see the real market price on wool. What's this mean? Who is this masked man? What's this talk about the real market price? This letter is the one the pony rider brought from the east. The price on wool is 12 cents a pound. But my letter says... Brindle, you know there were false letters sent, and you know that I changed them. Maggie told you her letter said the price would be 15 cents a pound. And you know very well the price that was sent to her was 6 cents a pound. Great Scott, that's right. Maggie, let me see your letter. Oh, here it is. Here it is right here. Huh. The letters were switched around. You figured on swindling her. You thought the price would be 20, so you paid 16. And the real price is 12. 12 cents a pound. 12. Leaping uh, crow bait, and you bought for 16. Wow. Maggie put over a deal on the cattleman. We can't pay no such price like that. We ain't got the cash. You'll pay it, you four-flushing, underhanded swindler, or you'll forfeit your $1,000 option money. And, Prindle, you'll have a hard time explaining to the men what you're going to do to repay the money they've entrusted to you. I can't explain it. We can't lose that $1,000. It's all the cash the cattlemen have got. And you can't afford to buy the wool and lose four cents on every pound you handle. I do think, however, that Maggie and the sheep herders would release you from the bargain and return the option money if you agree to leave this country to the sheep. Uh, leave it? Full stakes? Head south. Head for cattle country. I, I hate to leave Maggie. You leave why you have fines. You ain't no cowman no how. You better stay and go into sheep raising. What about it, Prindle? Do you persuade the cattlemen to leave, or will you stay here and go broke? Uh, I, I might have got the best of Maggie Martin, but I had a hunch who you was when I heard you call your horse Silver. What are you going to do? Well, when I tell the cattlemen the Lone Rangers are Guinness, I reckon there won't be no choice. Tell the cattlemen I'm for them 100%, or they'll go into cattle country. hi you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.